Only fools knows anger. That's what the Bible says. Not my own word. Don't be quick to get angry or only fools knows anger. Nursing anger means you harbor anger, you hold on to it and you allow it to stay in your heart. You give it a space in your heart, which means you are getting comfortable with that feeling. You love the feeling. It kind of helps you prove yourself to people. Who do you think you are? You know who I am. So those kind of things, you like it. But the Bible says only fools nurse anger. Only fools allow anger to consume and control them. You don't have to allow your anger to make you do foolish things, to make you express yourself in a foolish manner. You have to apply wisdom when you are angry because being angry is not wrong. But what you do with that feeling of anger and how you allow it to grow in your heart, is what will make it become a sin. Because by the time you allow anger to have a space in your heart, the Bible says that's insensitivity. Why is it an act of insensitivity? It's because when you are angry, you become illogical and unreasonable. You don't hold good judgment again. At this point, you only want to satisfy or fulfill that emotional desire, that passion to hurt the person like they hurt you, to make them feel the test of their medicine. You try to do that, you become insensible, foolish, and silly. That's what the Bible says. Because at this point, you are empty-headed. You just want to do as you feel. You start feeling your heart racing. By the time you give that anger a space to boil up, then you start reacting. And the Bible says, fools allow anger to rest within them. The wise man is cautious and turns from evil, but the fool is easily angered and is careless. Number two, anger gives a foothold to the devil. The fastest way the devil can hold any Christian is to get them enraged. Because for him to be able to enter into your heart and make you do foolish things is for him to make you enraged. Because at the point that you are enraged, you become illogical. Your normal being controlled in your right sense, in your logical sense, you're not thinking right again. You don't hold good judgment. So at this point, the devil will mess with you to do things. Because if you are easily angered, the devil uses people to offend you. And when you pick that offense, it makes you do things to them. And at that point, he is using you. He does this in relationships. He does this in marriages. When offense comes and then they have uncontrolled anger, at that point, a fight begins. It leads to the verbal abuse, the domestic violence at home. It's a product of anger. Because someone that has an anger issue that cannot deal with it, is allowing the devil to have a foothold through their anger. Go ahead and be angry. You do well to be angry, but don't use your anger as fuel for revenge. And don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. It's an opportunity you give the devil when you allow anger to remain in your heart, when you enjoy the feeling of anger. When you give him that foothold, he will use it. And then he will minister to your emotions, so to say. At such points that you allow anger to stay or linger, the devil uses it and makes you feel like you want to fulfill your desires. Of course, you want to fulfill that emotional passion, but then he uses it to cause strife on all sorts of evil. Why do riots happen? It's a product of anger. People are angry at something, but then the devil gets a foothold to enter through anger when wisdom is not applied. Number three, anger leads to revenge. The feeling of anger actually cries out for revenge. It says, I want to pay back. I want to hurt them the way they hurt me. I want them to feel the weight of what I felt. But allowing yourself to remain angry, if you allow yourself to nurse that anger, it gives the devil an opportunity to manipulate you. Don't give the slanderous accuser, the devil, an opportunity to manipulate you. That's what the scripture says. So don't give him that foothold. Because he wants you to take on revenge. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. In 1 Samuel chapter 25, David had this encounter with Nabal and Abigail. Where he actually helped Nabal. And at the point he needed Nabal's assistance for his young men. Nabal kind of paid him back evil through his words by speaking harsh and insultive words to him. And at this point, David was angry. He was ready to go slaughter him and all his men. But Abigail, the wife, came to meet David and gave him an advice. This is what the scripture says in that place. Then you will not have to feel regret or remorse, sir for having killed without cause or for having taken your own revenge. David said to her, Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who sent you today to meet me. Thank God for your good sense and for what you have done today in keeping me from the crime of murder 
and from taking my own revenge. David is actually happy because Abigail's advice is so good that it makes him start thinking again. It makes him start considering. Because when you are angry, it makes you selfish and all you want is to satisfy that angry feeling. Number four, anger leads to wickedness. The product of anger is actually wickedness. When someone is angry or if you've ever seen such a case that people were having a fight and before you know the other person start throwing things at home, breaking things. One thing you have to see there is that they never break things that belong to them. They only break things that belong to the other person because all they want to do is to get back at the person, to do these things to make them feel bad. So same way with people, when they get angry at other people, they try to defame their character. They try to say bad things and spread rumors about those people. What are they trying to do? They're trying to get back at the person they feel offended them. And that's what anger does. It leads to wickedness. Because all these kind of acts are acts of wickedness. And in the previous point, David would have taken revenge and caused a great wickedness by committing murder for no just cause. Because though Naba was foolish and insulted him for the good he did, that wasn't enough reason for David to go kill him and destroy his men. So anger truly does lead to wickedness and makes us hurt people. And the scripture says that's not what you were called to. The God you serve is a God of love. And the Bible says even God himself, his anger is just for a moment and his anger is based on justice. He only keeps that anger to perpetrate justice because he's a just God. He does not just go ahead because he has the power and he wants to just show people who he is. If not, we all would not be here. An angry person starts fights. A hot-tempered person commits all kinds of sins. When you are dealing with anger, the Bible says, do not be hasty, do not be quick to be angered, but be slow to be angered. And these two scriptures point that out clearly. A quick-tempered man acts foolishly, and a man of wicked intentions is hated. The second one says, when your heart overflows with understanding, you will be slow to get angry, but if you have a quick temper, your impatience will be quickly seen by all. These two scriptures are just opposing those two things. That anger makes you foolish and do foolish things. But you being slow to anger makes you a wise person. Number five, anger leads to bitterness. The truth is the more you allow anger to stay, the more time you give to anger to settle in your heart the more it poisons your soul. It will lead you to bitterness. Bitterness will not allow you to live a joyful life. There's no man that is an angry man that finds joy. I mean true joy. They might only try to find sources of being pleasured, but they will not have true joy in their hearts because of that anger that is lodging there. They have given room to anger to stay. And because of that, it takes space for joy to flow. A calm and undisturbed mind and hurt are the life and health of the body. But envy, jealousy, and wrath are like rottenness of the bones. It's telling you when you are angry, it leads you to a place of bitterness, which is makes your soul rotten. It is killing you slowly. That bitterness affects your body. It affects your health. And truly, you don't want to allow anger to settle in your heart such that this poison will grow in your life till it takes you out of this life. Number six, Anger brings distraction to your life. It's a mark of good character to avert quarrels, but fools love to pick fights. The truth is, if you are someone that is given to anger, every small offense, you pick a fight. Every small thing that is said that actually provokes you, you pick a fight. If you keep doing this, it's distracting you. What time will you have to focus on your own life? What time will you have to focus on your destiny and focus on the vision that God has given you to build and then go forward with your life? Once you are focused on the people that are offending you, trying to fight them, trying to pick a fight, trying to argue, at that point you are being distracted. That's a big distraction. So instead of allowing that distraction to get you, what should you do? Ignore. If I were to curse you in my language and you don't understand, you will not feel anything. It wouldn't be anything to you. You, you might even laugh. It might be funny. But then... It's when I curse you in a language that you understand, you decide to pick offense. Why should you curse me? But the truth is, my cause without a cause from you, like it cannot stand. Like Proverbs 26 verse 2 says that. So why are you picking a fight with me for causing you when you know that if you are a real believer, that that cause does not go anywhere or you just want to prove yourself? No, that's a distraction. A person of honor will put an argument to rest and only the stupid wants to pick a fight. Number seven as the last point, anger leads to solitude. The Bible says, 
Make no friendships with a man given to anger, and with a wrathful man do not associate, lest you learn his ways and get yourself into a snare. This is so scary because you should be afraid to become someone given to anger. If you see someone that is given to anger, they don't really have true friends. Such people might have people around them, they like going out to be around people, but it doesn't mean that these people are really for them. Because true friendship is actually me seeing something wrong in you, I tell you, this is wrong, you have to work on this, you have to change this. But if you have such friends around you, who never corrects you, you do wrong, they clap for you. You do right, oh, they clap for you. You should know that this is keeping you in solitude. Angry people like that don't expose their hearts to other people. They feel they know everything. Their anger has eaten deep into them and pride and arrogance has become the order of the day. They feel they are always right. So in their own eyes, they are always right. They are perfect people. And that anger has actually poisoned them. They are people that cannot maintain or sustain any friendship. And so the scripture says, do not even make friendships with them. Do not even associate with such a person. Because if you do, you might learn their way. Because they will be unbendable in their own way. And an angry person is seen in a narcissist. So in conclusion, being angry is not wrong. But allowing anger to dwell in you and turn into sin is wrong. The Bible says, be angry but do not sin. So do not let anger control you. Because if you allow that, it means you are a fool. And in dealing with your anger, the key to solve anger in your life is to learn the act of forgiveness. Instead of you trying to always claim your rights, when you are offended, learn to forgive before time. Choose love instead of hate. Choose peace instead of violence. And that will do your life so much well. I hope this video has been of help and value to you. If it is, give this video a thumbs up subscribe to this channel let me know in the comment section how this video is speaking to you thank you so much for watching my name is uwe mekwan this is my youtube channel and again subscribe to this channel it helps youtube algorithm to know that the message that is provided in this channel is actually valuable and beneficial bye bye